Thanks so much, Brianna. I want to go to Ukraine now, where it is clear that Russian separatists are really in complete control of the Baltiva, including a major rail hub. This is almost a week into the phantom ceasefire there. Our senior international correspondent, Nick Peyton Walsh, is live in Donetsk right now, where there was, Nick, we understand, shelling overnight. Well, it was remarkable actually here in the separatist stronghold yesterday, the most intense day of shelling on the outskirts city that we have seen in a long time, frankly, since the truce fell in the early hours of Sunday. Again, we heard some volleys today. It is measurably quieter, but the separatists have said uh, that one woman was killed in the shelling yesterday. Clearly, this is not a truce, and there has to come a moment, surely, where Ukraine, Russia, France, and Germany, their rhetoric catches up with the reality on the ground, and people declare the Minsk agreements to have been violated. The bolts of them may have been the Ukrainian defeat there, the surplus secretaries encircling that particular town, as we saw yesterday, and taking full control of it. That could have been the bloodiest period of this conflict so far. Ukraine is still counting its dead from that violence. And perhaps later on today, we will hear from the OSCE monitors in charge of uh, looking at this ceasefire, assessing it. But realistically, we're far from a truce. And the separatists now themselves, in fact, saying that if what they call Ukrainian fire continues uh, on their targets and territory here, they themselves will step out of the Minsk agreements. Then we are in a very uncertain, potentially, era for escalation of violence here, just on the edge of Europe.